our wonderful readers and viewers bombard us with questions, which we find immensely gratifying and fun, even though most of them are variations on the same themes. Can I train with back pain? Yes. Do I really need to wear shoes? Uh-huh. Should I wear a belt? Yep. Do I need a coach? Yepers. Everybody needs a coach. Can I train with an imminent neurological, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, or metabolic catastrophe? For real? No. Go to the hospital. Do these squats make my butt look big enough or too big? Just right. Your butt is lovely. Hey, Grace Hill, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription. And one thing we almost never get asked about is breathing. And that's a shame because a lot of you are screwing it up, even those among you who should know better. I would speculate that this is because most people just assume that breathing on the platform is as easy as, well, breathing or because they've been told all their life that they should breathe in on the way down and breathe out on the way up because that's how you channel all your key energy and also avoid a stroke. Everybody knows that. Of course, all of this is complete twaddle. So let's talk about breathing. And because we're nerds, let's begin by examining the marvelous technology of pulse oximetry. Most of you have been exposed to this wonderful device. A little clamp over your fingernail that shines infrared light through your finger and spits out a number on the monitor, usually between 96 and 100. As the light passes through your finger, it is differentially absorbed by different substances, including a substance called oxyhemoglobin, which is hemoglobin with oxygen attached to it in your red blood cells, little scarlet boxcars that carry precious cargo to oxygen-hungry tissues. Oxyhemoglobin absorbs light differently than unoxygenated hemoglobin. So this is a nifty way to determine how much of your hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. Thus, when the monitor says 98%, that means that 98% of the hemoglobin in the sample tissue is saturated with oxygen, which is, you know, a beautiful thing. In my day, when I worked with Paracelsus and Osler and Cushing, these things were big and expensive and clumsy and needed an output the size of a large microwave oven. But now you can buy them over the counter and carry them around in your pocket. So if you want, you can do a little experiment. Put one on, look at your oxygen saturation, do a set of squats and look again. The numbers are, you say, almost exactly the same, right? That's because you do not desaturate significantly during a set of three or five. My associate and fellow Grace Steel coach Noah Hayden and I have done this experiment repeatedly. And if we could do capnography on you, which looks at carbon dioxide concentration in the blood, we'd find a similar result, a negligible and transitory difference. Now, here's the upshot of all this nerdy discursion. You don't actually have to breathe during a set of five to perform the work or maintain overall respiratory metabolic homeostasis. Your muscles will definitely be ready to upload some oxygen and kick out some acid and CO2 when it's over. And you'll be breathing hard after you put down the bar, but things will normalize quickly. And that's because heavy sets are not aerobic. So when we're doing doubles and threes and fives, we don't actually breathe during the set so much to oxygenate our muscles, but we do breathe. We breathe because for most of us, not breathing during heavy work makes our brainstem totally freak out. And if you're like me, you prefer to maintain your brainstem and other primordial neurological structures in a non freak out standby mode to the extent possible. And it's all for the best anyway, because Breathing properly does other things for us besides just calming our reptile brains. All of them delightful. I have elaborated elsewhere on the safety and utility, the necessity, in fact, of the Valsalva maneuver during heavy strength training. Briefly, taking a large breath into the thoracic cavity and holding it against a closed glottis, that's what a Valsalva is, churns the athlete's thorax into a canister of compressed air which transmits pressure into the abdominal cavity and supports the spine and trunk from the inside out. 
the filthy libel that this procedure places one at risk for the extremely rare complications of cardiocerebral vascular misadventures has never been demonstrated. Quite the opposite. And omitting the Valsalva probably does put one at risk for the far more common minor musculoskeletal injuries seen due to poor truncal stability. Although, I'm not aware that this has ever been demonstrated either. If you lift heavy, you will Valsalva, whether you mean to or not. The only question is whether you'll do it right or not. I'd very much like for you to do it right. And if you lift on my platform, I'll really have to insist. No big deal. It's easy if you just remember these simple guidelines. We call them guidelines because it sounds nice. And I've been given to understand that niceness is very highly valued these days. Although I don't actually see much evidence of that. So anyway, guidelines. But they're actually more like rules. Think of them as very, very firm, but nice guidelines with a distinctly rule-like quality. Guide rule number one. There is one place and only one correct place to breathe for each barbell exercise. Guide rule number two. The breath comes at the beginning of the rep, not at the end. Okay, so let's just do this. The squat has a breath at the top before the movement begins. The breath is held all the way up until lockout. There is no bizarro kung fu, karate, tai chi, ki breathing as you lock the bar out with a grunt or a shout. You finish the rep, then cycle a breath as you reset your starting position and go again. The bench has a breath at the top before the movement begins. The breath is held all the way up until lockout. There is no bizarro kung fu, karate, tai chi, ki breathing as you lock the bar out with a grunt or a shout. You finish the rep and then cycle a breath as you reset your shoulders and chest and go again. The deadlift has a breath at the bottom before the movement begins. The breath is held all the way up to the lockout. There is no bizarro kung fu, karate, tai chi, ki breathing as you lock the bar out with a grunt or a shout. You lock out holding your breath and put the bar down, still holding your breath. When the bar hits the floor, you have finished the rep. Now you cycle a breath as you reset your position and back for another rep. Go. The press is a little more complicated, but let's just stay with the standard or strict press. The press has a breath at the bottom before the movement begins. The breath is held all the way up to the lockout over the shoulders. There is no bizarro kung fu, karate, tai chi, ki breathing as you lock the bar out with a grunt or a shout. You lock out, holding your breath, as you engage your electric shrug and then put the bar down while still holding your breath. When the bar arrives back in the starting position floating over your shoulders, you have finished the rep. Now, you cycle a breath as you reset your elbows and wrists in body position for another rep. Go! The more astute among you may have detected some deeply hidden patterns there. Notice that I didn't say that every rep gets a breath. That's not a guide commandment. Although, I think it should be. Decent people take one breath for every rep. People who don't aren't exactly wrong. They're just perverts. But a guide law won't stop them from holding their breath, and as long as they do the lift properly and don't break guide writ number one or guide writ number two, well then, I don't judge. Much. Or perhaps I am a little judgy, because I find that a properly executed breath at the proper time is an enormous aid to resetting the movement for the next rep. Taking a deep breath helps reestablish the arch and the shoulder retraction in the bench. It helps tighten up the Superman chest, so essential to the squat in the press. And a big breath at the bottom of the deadlift helps the lifter turn his torso into a cylinder of compressed air, rigid and tight and all set to transmit the huge forces to be generated by the legs and the hips. But whether you take a breath every rep like the good, decent and trustworthy people who make the world a better place, or hold your breath during some reps like other people, you must follow guide laws number one and number two. Breathe at the right place for each exercise and hold it until the rep is complete. 
You'll maintain the benefits of the Valsalva for orthopedic stability and safety during the parts of the exercise when you need it the most. And you will lift with more safety, grace, and strength. Thanks for watching.